Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Today we have a eBay finds video. In this box there should be a Lenovo ThinkPad X220T and I say there should be because I haven't actually opened this thing up. As you guys can see it's all taped up still so we will be unboxing this right now and I will uh, give you guys a quick overview of this laptop. There will be a separate upgrade video where I take this with some more RAM in it, add a new battery, solid state drive, uh, Ubuntu and Windows 10. Today I'm just going to be uh, testing this out with Ubuntu 16.04 just to uh, make things quick, but there will be a separate upgrade video for this laptop. Now I bought this off eBay for 120 bucks, not the greatest deal, not the worst deal either. Uh, specs include a i5 uh, 24 520M, that's a dual core processor with four threads at 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, we also have four gigabytes of uh, DDR3 RAM in here, no hard drive. I do have a 120 gigabyte solid state drive laying around for testing in the back, so we will be using that for testing purposes. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box. So, uh, just a uh, quick plug, there was a behind the scenes video uh, published yesterday, so if you're interested in checking that out, uh, I talk a little bit about the retro ThinkPad, the 32-inch uh, monitor that I got, um, and a couple other updates for you guys. So if you want to take a look at that, the link will be down in the description. And this is, uh, it's like they got a used box, and the used box was all beat up, so they just kind of like cobbled it back together. There we go. That was a little bit awkward. Whoa. Yeah, it's just, this is a very odd box. Huh. All right, so we got a nice uh, little card from the seller. That's nice. Usually eBay sellers don't include stuff like this, so it's a nice touch. Um, by the way, if you guys want to check out the seller uh, that I got this X220 from, you can check out the link to the seller in the description. I'll put the link in there for you guys. Oh, and it does come. That's nice. I don't actually have a genuine... Uh, you guys would think I would have a genuine Lenovo charger or, or power supply by now, but I don't. All mine are just like generic Chinese knockoffs, so that's a nice touch. They do include a, uh, uh, a genuine... A Lenovo power supply. I didn't realize they would. Must have missed that in the description. And here, yeah, good job packing. No complaints about, pack, uh, about packing. The uh, box was a little odd, but that's okay. So here we go. This is the X220T that I ordered. Looks like it is in, uh, this, is, this is beautiful actually. This is in very, very good condition. Uh, comes with the, uh, I believe this is a 9-cell, 6-cell or 9-cell battery. I'll have to uh, throw an annotation in there uh, as to which one this is. Is this a genuine battery by any chance? Yes, it is. This is a genuine uh, Lenovo battery, so that's a plus there. Uh, we have a Windows 7 Pro COA on the back. I want to hide that from you guys so you don't steal it from me. <laughs> uh, docking station port. What else do we have here? Um, the X220T doesn't have USB 3.0. The X220, I believe, does, um, which is a bit odd. Here is an up close and personal look at the X220T. Now, first off, as you can see, the lid is in immaculate condition. There is not a scratch to be seen. It could use a cleaning, but besides that, it looks beautiful. So looking on the left side, you can see that this side is also pretty much perfect. Not a scratch to be seen. Everything is in very good condition. We have display port, USB 2.0, uh, VGA, another USB 2.0 port, and of course, uh, ventilation on the side. Uh, and then on the other side, I was a little bit disappointed because I'm not sure if you can see that, and this wasn't advertised in the listing. There is a small crack right here, and I can fix that with uh, just you know some super glue. Uh, not too big of an issue, and it'll, it'll come out just fine. It should look nearly brand new once I'm done with it. Um, but that is a bit disappointing just because they didn't list that in the product listing. Uh, we have a USB 2.0 port, uh, always on port, SD card reader, Ethernet. It does come with the uh, pen. So take that out here, our uh, digitizer. So we will try that out when I install Ubuntu. And that is in very good condition. This whole thing looks pretty much brand new, like someone stored it, maybe someone dropped it first and then they stored it uh, in a closet and didn't touch it. And if I open this up, well, I didn't give you guys a look at the back. There's the back, once again, pretty much perfect. And the front is the same story. But if I open this up, and this is really nice, the keyboard is in great condition, so that means, let me get this in focus. So that means I'm not gonna have to go out and buy a new keyboard. Same sort of the trackpad, track buttons, it has all the uh, stickers on it still, and the screen looks great as well. Does rotation work? Oh, that's so smooth. 
Oh, wow, that is so smooth. And it should flip over like this, and you can use it as a tablet. Once again, we'll experiment with that uh, in just a second when I get Ubuntu on this machine. Let me flip it back around. We have a fingerprint reader, a couple toggle buttons right here. Is the battery in? You know what, let's see. Let's see if this will power on. I doubt it will, but just for the heck of it. Oh yeah, that, battery's, uh, that battery hasn't been charged in a while, or the battery's dead. I, I need to test the battery because the battery was not guaranteed to be good on this, and usually um, when I get older ThinkPads like this, the batteries are below 50% of their life. Um, so the battery will probably have to be replaced. And as you can see, uh, there are a couple scratches on the bottom, and for bottoms of laptops like this, I mean, I kind of expect that. This is, this is where you're putting the laptop on the work surface, and sometimes there's something on the work surface, and the bottom gets scratched up. So a lot has happened in the past two hours since the last clip. I was able to get a little bit of money taken off this machine, and I'll tell you guys why in just a sec. And I was also able to install Arch Linux, or uh, Antigros in this case. And as you guys can see, just a quick update on that crack on the bottom of the laptop with the drive cover on and the uh, hard drive installed. You can barely see it. It just looks like two little lines right here. So I'm going to dab some super glue over those and uh, that problem should be solved. Not really too much of an issue because once again, the uh, seller did advertise this laptop as having some uh, dents and scratches and that's what I consider a dent or a scratch. So not too bad there. The one thing that the seller did miss though was the fact that this laptop Oh, can I do this with one hand? Nah, not really. I tried. All right, I used two hands for that. But one thing that the seller did miss was the fact that this laptop has a supervisor password on it, and that was not advertised in the seller's description. So I contacted the seller. He's really, really fast to, to get back to me. Really a good seller to work with, actually. He was willing to uh, make a compromise, and he took 30 bucks off my purchase uh, as I requested. So overall, very, very good customer service, and I'm very happy with this seller. I mean, stuff like this happens. I can understand how you would miss this. You know, you're testing machines. Uh, you forget to go into the BIOS to check, you know, if it has a supervisor password, and it's just something that can slip through the cracks. That might be a contributing factor uh, to the reason I cannot install Ubuntu 16.04 on this thing. For some reason, when I try to boot into the live environment, uh, I was just getting a white screen, so not really sure what was going on there. That's why I decided to go with Antigros. But as you can see, yes, there is a supervisor password on this machine, and no, the seller does not know what that supervisor password might be. Let's boot up into Arch Linux and take this for a test drive. Once again, we do have a solid state drive in here, so boot times are pretty snappy. Uh, we are working with a 1366 by 768 IPS display, and yes, it is a touch screen. You could either use touch or you could use the uh, included digitizer right here. And this does work with Arch Linux. Actually, it works with uh, uh, this Linux installation very, very well. And I'll demonstrate that right now because we're already at the desktop. That's how fast that boot time is. So if I just hover over the screen, you can see I can drag the mouse around without even making contact with the display. Touch activities, open up the application menu, and just select an application. Very, very, very responsive. Let me get out of this. I don't want to no, know. I don't want to type in the password right now for the key ring. I'll try that again. Let's go to something like the file manager. I'm standing up and trying to do this. It's a little bit awkward. And of course, I can grab this, drag it around with the digitizer, and I can also do that with my finger. So touchscreen is working just fine. And of course, with the X220, you can fold it up into tablet mode. So I'm going to zoom out here. And the tripod's still too tight, making that horrible screeching sound. But if I rotate the screen to the right and flip it back, ta-da! It is now in tablet mode. There we go. So now we got the screen in the correct orientation. And as you can see, works just as it did before. So let's flip it back into laptop mode. Not going to use the tablet mode anymore, probably. I think I'm going to stick with uh, laptop mode for a majority of this demo. So we'll flip the screen back around. Now, let's do some daily computing tasks. So I'm going to open up Chromium. Let's browse the web a little bit. We'll pop open a couple of our applications. There we go. And I have some bookmarks already set up for us. So let's try navigating to YouTube. As you can see, that was nice and quick. 
and the sound does work. So let me get past this ad and go into one of my videos. What is this playing back at? Let's try 1080p at 60 FPS. Even though this displays only 1366 by 768. So going to my website, this is the behind the scenes video that I published last night. And we'll play back this video. So I decided to shoot a quick behind the scenes video today. One, to give you guys some information and two, to have So no problem there. Scrolling is nice and smooth. Now the one thing that I did notice, I'm not sure if this is an issue with all X220Ts in general, or maybe it's just a uh, Linux driver issue, um, but the track pad is a little wobbly. It's not really doing it right now, but Sometimes the mouse will start to freak out, like it'll jump all over the place. It did it a little bit right there. I mean, I, it's not too big of an issue for me because I mainly just use the uh, track point, which is nice and smooth, works just fine with this machine. Um, but the trackpad does seem to be a little bit jumpy for some reason. And some of you are probably rolling your eyes. So this is actually uh, my favorite site because of all the ads and scripts and junk they have on here. Uh, CNN is a pretty taxing website pretty taxing on system resources, sometimes causes browsers like uh, Chrome to crash randomly. But as you can see, this system is taking it just fine. Since I think this would make a pretty good school machine, let's simulate a school scenario. So let's say I'm writing a research paper. I have a couple tabs open. Honestly, when I'm actually writing a research paper, I usually have probably about 30 tabs open, but I'm not gonna go through and open up 30 tabs right now. Uh, and since we're writing a paper, we also need a word processor, so I'm gonna go into the application menu, find LibreOffice Writer. All right, let's just open up LibreOffice first. Oh, there we go. And we want a writer document. So I'm typing up my paper. Hello, YouTube. And I might, is there a way to disable the trackpad on this? Because I keep hitting it with my hand on accident and I don't use the trackpad, so I need to find a way to disable that. But as you can see, that works just fine and we will manipulate the text make the text a little bit bigger, change the color, make it bold, underline it, italicize it, and make it red. There we go. Now, let's say I also need to look at some data. I downloaded some data from a site. It's in a uh, Excel spreadsheet format. So let's open up the application menu again. LibreOffice Writer, or not LibreOffice Writer, but just LibreOffice. I hate, I hate the fact that when you click on that, it doesn't actually open the menu again. See, what you need to do is actually go into the application menu and click on the application that you want now since we already have an instance open. There we go. So we got our spreadsheet open right here. Imagine that there's actually data in there. We'll, we'll put some data in there. Hello. So there we go. We got LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc, and Chrome open. Uh, since I only have four gigs of RAM, I'm kind of concerned about the memory usage right now. So I'm also going to open up Task Manager, go into the application menu again, find Task Manager. I think it's called System Monitor for this, S-Y-S, S-Y-S-T-E-M Monitor. Come on. Oh, you're being a little bit touchy. You know I can just use the button on the pen to uh, open up the application. I just realized that. <laughs> so then I have to keep tapping it. There we go. What's our memory look like right now? Now we're only using two gigs of RAM. So I have plenty of RAM left to open up some more applications. Yay! So I'm uh, using Chromium. Something's not quite compatible on Chromium. And I need to use Firefox. I have run into a couple of situations like that. So we're going to go for Firefox, open that up. And we need to maximize this. I need to change the menu so it actually has the button there to maximize it. There we go. We're on Firefox and we'll navigate to my website again. So aacats.tech. There we go. Load it up nice and fast and we are running a bunch of applications simultaneously. So this thing can definitely handle a multitasking workflow. Overall, pretty impressed with this X220. Did run into some issues just with the seller in particular, but he was really, really fast uh, to resolve all of those issues. Overall, machine is in very, very good condition. I mean, this thing just looks beautiful. Looks nearly brand new. I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up using this. This might be something that I give to my mom because she's still using that uh, Dell Latitude. And it's a little bit on the slow, uh, slow side. It has a, I think a dual core or a quad core atom in it. 
um, two gigs of RAM and cloud rating. It's it's a bit sluggish. You know, this would be a lot better for her, especially since you know it, it folds into a tablet too, and uh, she likes the tablet interface, touch interface, a uh, little bit better than using a keyboard. So I'm thinking about it. I'll either use it or uh, I'll give it to my mom. Um, but I don't really need this because I have a T430. And let's do a size comparison real quick. So I'll take the T430 off my docking station. Oh, that's what I didn't tell you guys. Okay, so the battery, the battery in the uh, X220T actually does hold a charge according to the battery manager in uh, the Arch. Um, we're getting about two and a half hours to three hours of battery life out of this. Um, so definitely not at 100%, but it does hold the charge. I think I will probably still end up buying a new battery though. So let's take a look at the size compared to the T430. Let me take you guys off the tripod. We'll travel around here. And you can see that the X220 is just a bit smaller than the T430. So the X220T with the six cell battery is about four pounds, a little over four pounds. And then my T430, actually they weigh nearly the same. Huh, that's interesting. I thought the uh, X220 would be significantly lighter, but it's not. Oh, so you're not really getting, you're not really getting a weight advantage there. You know, I, I thought this, this might be a little bit easier to carry around, and it is since it's smaller. Um, but as far as weight's concerned, uh, weight's the big issue because, you know, when this is in my backpack, I can't really tell how big it is, but I can tell how heavy it is. Um, so the fact that these two are nearly the same weight is interesting. Also, another fun fact. For some reason, I don't know why Lenovo did this, but the X220 does not fit on this docking station. If I removed this plastic piece right here uh, and the battery, I'm not really sure what you'd call this battery guide, I guess, uh, it would fit, but currently it does not because those are blocking the uh, docking port on the bottom of this from making contact. So the uh, back of the X220 would actually have to be up here in order for it to properly dock with this docking station. So you need to get a uh, Ultra, I think it's an Ultra Series 3 docking station for this. I'm not really sure why Lenovo did that because this docking station is using the exact same port. And according to other users online, this will work with the X220T with some modifications, but not in its current state. So not really sure why Lenovo did that. I would have liked to have a, a universal docking station I could use with you know the T430, my sister's T410 when I need to service it, and this uh, X220T, but of course, life cannot be that easy, unfortunately. All right, guys. So that's gonna be about it for this video. If you guys didn't notice, I am using a new microphone system. So let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, I did run into some issues with it last night. I was getting some uh, noise in it. Um, so hopefully that didn't happen during this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment down in the comment section. Once again, if you wanna check out the seller where I bought this laptop from, uh, I will put the link to the seller down in the description. I think that's about it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like this video, drop a like on it. Of course, if you didn't like it, please tell me why. Don't just dislike the video. If you didn't like the video, please tell me the reason why you didn't like it so I can improve these videos in the future. Um, I really appreciate good feedback. And if you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. All those links will be down in the description. Uh, if you guys didn't notice, I did add the Patreons um, to the beginning of this video. You know, just kind of a uh, recognition short, sort of thing. And I will be doing that in the future as well. So just an FYI there. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.